Hey, are you a fan of poorly written and acted movies where the plot doesn't make any sense? Where there's no hope of a payoff for the time that you wasted watching? Neil Breen's movies outshine the worst of them all. There are a lot of brilliant storytellers in the world, and then there's Neil Breen. Which is weird because a man who is a successful architect in real life should have a keen attention to detail. But as you're about to discover, his attention to plot line and story is on par with a lobotomy victim. How could you have done this? So keep huffing on your sniffing salts while I try to unpack this unmitigated, disastrous gem. The film begins in the Nevada desert to the dulcet tone of Breen's narration, bragging about himself while his name dominates the inordinately long credit sequence. I won many medals for distinguished service. Aaron Brand is a mercenary spy combatant. He's a complicated man navigating the pitfalls of international intrigue from his car and sometimes from this cluster of rocks. He does get a ton of cardio in, you know, with his Jim Hills. His latest contract is to shut down the Las Vegas Strip for two months. Las Vegas, where anything goes, enjoy it while you can. I'm about to end it all. You'd think that a man who has it all, six flip phones, four dead laptops, two air pistols, various syringes, vials, surgical gloves, and two, count them, two whole TV satellite dishes sticking out of his Mercedes would be the happiest man in the world. Well, you would be wrong, madam. He's an empty husk of a man since the government, I think, assassinated his fiancée while they were in a public pool at Hedonism 2005. <laughs> Not only is Breen's performance absolutely inspired, but we're also introduced to the back of his nutsack, which is completely uncalled for. Seriously, what the fuck? What is this? What's even stranger to me is how he holds the blood flower. Anyway, back to the desert, Bran boasts about how he can hack into any system from his simple but brilliant setup. Hell, he's invented half the systems anyway. I'm only four minutes into this movie and I'm already feeling drowsy. I also notice randomly placed human bones scattered around the desert and highways. Are these his victims? Who are they? What happened to them? Are they worth an explanation? He also mentions around this time that he's some form of a cyborg, which is the first and last we hear about this. And then he cuts to some stock footage of an eye operation. I've received bio-electro-medical implants to assist me in carrying out my attacks. He's a lonely man who probably has mercury poison because of all the canned tuna he eats while he's driving. Why? Because he's busy, that's why. He's up against military forces that have functioning laptops, jets, control rooms, and uniforms. Keep in mind that this has all transpired under the first 10 minutes of the movie. I'm constantly changing my identity. Governments don't dare try to kill me. I've let them all know that I've planted biological bombs in seven major cities around the world. <laughs> Got you by the short hairs. Again with the assassination and dead fiancé ah. bit. Come on, man, get over it. You are not John Wick. And here we see him making love to his ex's body in a body bag. I have a feeling that he killed her because, well, he's probably a lunatic. Okay, so far everything seems believable. But the deadly force shield of his car doesn't seem to cut it. I don't think that he can make himself invisible. This is just too far-fetched. Otherwise, why wouldn't he use it all the time, huh? So we're probably 20 some odd minutes into this thing. It's impossible for me to cram every absurdity into this video. Like for example, this 23 mile, three day drive to Las Vegas. But then again, he's probably stopping for a lot of dirt naps, which I get because I'm a big fan of dirt naps. Finally, he makes it to Vegas and has a very stilted and unnatural conversation with Tim Heidecker. You're a genius, the best, but you know that. What do you have for me this time? Cryptography? Hacking into a banking system, closing down a bank, fixing an election, it's all easy. None of it makes any sense. What else can I say? Okay, one such scene is when he bribes up this attendant. Here's $200. I want to borrow the car. And then he impersonates a chauffeur to murder a newlywed couple. I don't know what the, the F is going on here. The happy couple's joy sours on a dime as they inexplicably and immediately regret getting married. I can't believe we did this. I've only known you for two days. That's all it takes in Vegas. Why did you wait so long? I can't believe this. I need a drink. Brand offers some champagne garnished with poisoned strawberries. The spouse dies. I don't feel well. 
she's like, oh my god! She's now paralyzed. Unfortunately, we learn that he's picked up the wrong couple. Oh my god. And since we don't know why he's abducted this couple in the first place, none of this really matters anymore. Get out! Get out! The marriage is over! He dumps the dead husband and paralyzed wife. Here's your husband returns to intercept the actual couple, but he learns that they're not at the chapel, but then he finds them in the desert, having committed suicide. The rationale behind all of this is never explained. The logic of this movie is on par with that of a 10-year-old kid with a head injury. What's even more troubling is I began to feel strange. What happened? Why are my lips not moving when I speak? Oh, sh**. I'm in Brain World! The only way to get out of this is to finish the video. But <laughs> the crowning glory is his very official military denim vest adorned with all his medals. <laughs> and in preparation, he gets busy tightening his nuts. No, not those nuts, but those to his TV dishes. I can create an EMP electromagnetic blast. And he muses about creating an EMP electrical cold magnetic pulse. Just so we're sure we know what he's talking about. Brand initiates the attack, but then immediately regrets it. He needs to find the magic stone given to him by the ambiguous old man in the desert. The stone that didn't cure the girl's brain cancer. No! That, that's impossible. How can that be? but uses the fool's gold to bring his wife back from the dead, I think? I'm not sure what's going on. And then a bunch of unexplained superfluous stuff happens. He is planning something very big. Bigger than 9-11 or any of the other large catastrophes we caught in time after 9-11. And then the credits roll. And then we see Breen's name a bunch more times. Breen's incapable hands are all over his seminal film. <laughs> The script and dialogue are confusing and way too on the nose. Where does he go? He's on a quest. Don't ask, he's protected. He clearly doesn't have an understanding of filmmaking. Acting, well, let's just say that's non-existent all throughout the film. Okay, so the verdict. Is this film worth watching? Well, it depends on the fragility of your mental state, but if you do love good, bad movies, then definitely yes. You will no doubt piss yourself laughing like I did. And there you have it. Let me know your opinion on this glimmering opus. And let me know in the comments if you want to see more subject matter like this. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much and catch you in the next one.